Blog Talk Radio. Uh... Welcome to this conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, my name is Chrisom, and every week uh, on a Wednesday, we have these conversations to help you in your Kundalini Awakening experience. Um, I would like to say hello to Amelia Santara, my co-host. I'm going to bring her into the Shakti Zone. There she is. Hello, Amelia. Are you there? I'm here, Prism. Hello. Happy Wednesday to you, to everybody. (laughs) (laughs) I'd like to also welcome uh, Eileen Loro, and it looks like Rosemary Goliath, Starlin, Suka, Elizabeth, Dalton Gonzalez, and Julie. Hello, everybody, and, and thank you for joining us today. I'd like to welcome those who are listening just on their computer and they're not in their chat room. Hello to you, and hello to the to the folks that uh, listen to this in the archives, um, uh, welcome to those listening in the archives, and also welcome to those who are listening to this in their sleep. Welcome to you, my sleeping brothers and sisters. Um, now I'll go ahead and pass it on over to Amelia. Thank you, Chris. And well, hello, everybody. As always, it's really good to be here on a Wednesday. It's something that I enjoy doing on a Wednesday, and I look forward to it every week, to hearing the teachings from Eucharism and to seeing the people in the chat room and just just having this sense of community that I get coming here every Wednesday. But anyway, to begin as normal, I would like to let people know where they can go if they would like to make a donation to support the work that Chrism does on Kundalini Awakening Systems. Just to let you know, before I give the address, there is absolutely no expectation or pressure on anybody to donate. But if you're in a position to do so, and you want this information in order to donate, here it comes. It's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And on the upper right-hand corner, you will see a donate button and it's quite easy to follow the instructions there. This is um, the only means of financial support that CRISM receives, and so if you're in a position, it is gratefully received. Um, CRISM will give you all the names and at least the addresses of all the different places where his teachings can be had and all the different venues where he offers support um, to people going through a Kundalini awakening process. I can never remember what the addresses are, Chris. So I'm going <laughs> to pass right. it back to you again. <laughs> right. On the on the YouTube network it would be Chrisum Kundalini or Chrisum with the number zero with a slash through it Kundalini. Because it's uh, uh Amelia, I'm gonna put you in the blue here. I'm getting that echo. There we go. And then um yeah, you go onto the YouTube network and you'll see about 300 videos. And then also to, on the Facebook uh, social network, you can go to a group called Kundalini Awakening! Exclamation point. You can also go to a group called Kundalini Awakening Systems 2 and the Kundalini Radiance Community. These are all uh, in the group section of the Facebook network. Uh, In the Yahoo Networks, we have Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at Yahoo Groups. And uh, we also have that same name on uh, Google Plus, on the Google Plus Networks. And so those are some areas that you can get to. In addition to the the blog that uh, Amelia gave you the address to, um, those are some of the areas where you can get the information. You can also just go to Chris or Chris Mitchell or Chris, Chris Kundalini on Facebook and just go to that web page as well. And these are free teachings, my friends. These are free teachings. Even yes, yes, you know, I've been advised that I have to accept donations, and I gratefully do so. Uh, but these these teachings, they're yours. 
to have and to hold for those who can have and hold them. Not everybody can. And for those that can, I would like you to listen to our uh, our Wednesday Radiant Sutra reading. And the Radiant Sutras have been uh, donated by Josephine Smith, and we're very grateful to Josephine for donating the Radiant Sutras. And here, here is the Radiant Sutra number 73. Behind the spine is infinity. Below the perineum are invisible pulsating roots which open downward into space. The heart is wide as a spiral galaxy. Steadily consider back, root, heart and know the living body of vastness that you are. And I'll say an amen to that. Uh, I'd like to say hello to Fasci. Hello, Fasci. Uh, and and uh, we have some guests there with numbers after them, 58 and 99. Hello to you. Uh, so, Amelia, I'm going to bring you back on, put you into the Shakti Red. There she is. Hi. That just means for people who don't know, turning on and off the microphone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They give us a color choice. When you're when you're on hold, you're in the blue, and when you're on, when you're live, you're in the red. And I'm going to put you back into the blue just for a second, my dear. Okay. And I'm going to welcome. Hello, Eileen. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, Chris. It's good to are hear you. Are you seeing dolphins? Are you seeing dolphins out your window? I'm sorry. Oh. Are you dolphin? No, I'm at the condo now. So. Oh, I see. You're seeing I alligators seen, out your window. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen the alligator for a while. I don't know where he is. A lot of birds, so beautiful birds. herons and cranes and an osprey. Oh, beautiful. So, well, welcome <laughs> to the program. I'm going to go ahead and put you in the blue. Thank you, Chris. And I'm going to say, I'm going to try to say hello to Rosemary here. Hello, Rosemary. Hello. Hello. Hey, there you are. Do you have any announcements yes. you'd like to make? Yes, we have a, a very short amount of time left yet, but not that short. But I'm, I'm, my body is alerting me that things are happening soon. So get busy, busier, you know, like that. That's what I mean, my experience of it right now. So it's the seminar here in St. Paul, Minnesota, September 27th and 28th. We're still accepting registrations. Happy to hear from, from anyone interested. Thank you, Kristen. We'll see you soon here. All right. Thank you, Rosemary. I'm going to put you in the blue and bring up Her Holiness once again, Amelia Santara. Hello, Amelia. Hello, Kristen. So I'm just going to, I'm going to leave you in the red just for a second here. Now, the reason, everybody, I'm leaving her in the red is because that not because she owes a debt or anything like that. This isn't red tape. This is just a red color microphone. But I've decided. Uh, typically, when when I when I start a show, I don't know I don't know what the uh, show is going to be about. The Kundalini uh, just begins to speak on certain subjects, and those subjects typically meld into a a solid subject line. However, today I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to just give you an idea. I'll just put you in the blue here. <laughs> She's got a pretty sensitive microphone. So I'm just going to... Uh, today I'd like to take questions from from the chat room, if the, if the chat room would be so so kind as to ask a few, or, or to anybody else who's listening off the chat room. The, the phone number to call in uh, is... 347, that's the area code, 347-934-0026. I'll be taking questions from the audience for as long as that lasts, but I'll also be taking uh, questions uh, from Amelia Santara, who has who has been uh, taking some of the questions that have been asked on one of the Facebook groups and applying them to this program so that uh, people can hear the responses uh, you know, in a different way. And so, uh, without further ado, I will go right on over to Amelia here, who is who is now in the red, you red girl. 
Okay. Um, do you think we should check in the chat room that the sound is okay, Chrism? If somebody oh, yes. left always, know. Always, always, yeah. Always. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you beautiful, wonderful people in the chat room. How's it coming through? Waiting. Waiting. <laughs> oh, somebody's typing. Elizabeth's typing. Starlin's typing. Oh, good. Good, 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 good. That sounds nice and clear. Oh, it's good. Finally. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, putting Amelia back in the red. Now, Amelia, because your mic is so very sensitive, even the rustling of papers comes across very, very clearly. Okay, okay Prism. I'm just aware that the sound, okay, doesn't change. I can hear a certain sound whether I'm on or off the microphone, so that's why I wanted to check if me coming on made a difference. So, okay, it doesn't look as if it does, but okay. Well, on the group today, or in the last couple of days, there was um, a member asked a question, um, I think it was, um, who had awoken Kundalini? And from that, um, we had a really interesting discussion. There was a lot of sharing, and there was a lot of questions came up. And um, it was was a really interesting um, conversation, and one question led to another, and the sharing was really lovely. So just before we came online, I jotted down a couple of the questions. So I just jotted the questions down. So how would you like me to to do that? I mean, somebody somebody asked, you know, is Kundalini the real thing? Is it is it a real thing? How is life different? All right, all right, Um, all right, all right, right. Ask me a question, Amelia. Yes, is Kundalini a real thing? Yes, it is a real thing. It is a real uh, component of our human systems. It is it is as real as the, the, the your feet and your arms, your legs, your eyes, your brain, your tongue. Everything that you are, the Kundalini is as real as that. Now, is materiality real? It, now, it depends on what perspective you're looking at. Uh, you know, to some people, we're just, we're spirits driving a flesh uh, um, biological machine. And to others, to other forms of consciousness, especially those within another biological flesh machine, we're, we're people that are having, uh, you know, a very amazing, lovely, beautiful, exciting uh, powerful spiritual uh, evolution. Um, Kundalini is, is is the petrol in that machine. It's the it's what the machine is made of. It is it is the divine embrace upon the physical systems, and and uh, so yes, it is a very real situation. Absolutely. Okay, how how much time does a Kundalini awakening take? Well, it'll take uh, a different amount of time for each person. There is no uh, factory outlet for Kundalini Awakening. You know, you can't buy the latest time, uh, fashion, technique for awakening the Kundalini. Uh, A lot of it's going to depend on your karma and what you bring to the table this lifetime uh, in in the area of spiritual evolution. You know, what... What you know? How is it that you're even hearing about the word Kundalini, and where is your interest level with that word, and why is your interest level there? You know, a lot of that has to do with with what you have uh, brought to the table with regards to your Kundalini awakening uh, cognition, and you know the experience that you may be having with it. So it takes a level of time that is perfect for you. Not perfect for the next person standing next to you or the, the person in two or three cars over in the freeway or the, the person in line ahead of you at the grocery store. It is not the same for anyone. It is unique and different for everyone. And yet, it is present. 
you know, in very similar situations within a person, the, the base of the spine, the last three vertebrae of the spine. There's, so there are similarities. It's just that the timing of the awakening is going to be different and unique for each person, as well as how that awakening expresses itself in the person. You know, some people have the freight train immediately up the spine. Some people have a lot of kriyas first or entities first or visions first or, you know, vibrations, heavy, heavy vibrations first. Then they get the freight train. Some people get a soft train. Some people get more than one freight train. And so <laughs> there's a lot of different uh, variables that a person can experience with regards to, to the awakening event. But the time, the timing of the event uh, is unique to the individual, and that's just for the, you know, the first aspect of it, the first introduction of it into the, the cognitive awareness of the body or the physical awareness of the of the uh, physical body, uh, with regards to how long an activation takes. Well, an activation can be very very fast, uh, or depending on that person's evolution, it can be very very gradual. Once again, I mean, you can't really compare yourself to anybody. You can't compare yourself to me or to Rosemary or to Amelia or Gopi Krishna or anybody that's actually had... Uh, okay. Thank you, Starlin. Mm -hmm. I see that. Uh, anybody that's actually had the Kundalini, you can't really say, oh, yeah, mine's exactly like like uh, Celestial Rubies, you know. I, my, mine's exactly like her and and mine did the exact same thing her, that hers did at the exact same time that, that, it, that it happened. Where, you know, you're not going to get that with anybody. And you will hear this from people. Oh, yeah, yeah, mine took three months. Yeah, I'm done with it now. I'm looking for the next thing. And if you hear that, it's not the Kundalini that they've had. They're, they're calling it the Kundalini. They may even think that it's the Kundalini, but it is not the Kundalini. As Kundalini goes on and on and on and on and on, into your death. You take Kundalini with you into your death. It follows you. And it is also present in your next incarnation, which may be, you know, part of the whole agenda. So many people are coming on now with uh, with some fairly uh, strong uh, Kundalini experiences now. I don't know if it's just because of the Internet or what, but, but people seem to be really coming into it. And it's a good thing. And a lot of it, I think, could be... Uh, a next life population of having some of these extra gifts like teleportation or telepathy or, you know, any of the uh, uh, ascended skills, maybe as a society base, like the rishis, you know, like the rishis in, in ancient Sanskrit, in the ancient Sanskrit civilization, you know, they lived a life that had many of the, uh, of the uh, psychic attributes what we would call gifts of the kundalini. And so maybe this is a, this is a, a population in development. Um, so with, as far as timing goes, that's always going to be unique with a person. The, they may have the same phenomena, but the, the, even if they have the same type of phenomena, the, 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 that, which is, that which comprises the phenomena will always be different. Thank you, Amelia, for your patience. Please, let me let me actually go with uh, Starlin's question here. Okay, Amelia. Yeah, I was going to ask that next too. Anyway, <laughs> great question. <laughs> Starlin writes. She writes. Chris, I'm somewhere today. I saw you make a differentiation between activated and awakened. Can you say more about that? Yeah. Uh, the, the activated state is typically the invitation into the Kundalini. All of a sudden. All of a sudden. Somehow, somewhere, some way, uh, a person starts to think about deep spiritual matters. A person begins to to quest in their inner self about uh, matters that pertain to spiritual evolution, matters that pertain to to uh, practicing the noble qualities of of forgiveness and service and giving and help and strength and honesty, truth. Clarity, tolerance, diligence. Uh, you know, these, these types of inner disciplines become a, a very important part of the person's conscious uh, makeup. And, and this came out of the blue. All of a sudden, they just start to have this. Now, 
Some of them can be practicing yoga. Some of them, some of them can be uh, practicing Tai Chi or Qigong or some sort of a spiritual, uh, spiritual uh, belief system. Others can be sitting on a bus, and here it comes. Um, the, the activation stage is typically that which works itself into the awakening stage, and, and really the dividing line uh, between the activated state and the awakened state would be, one of them would be a spinal sweep, okay? Uh, a spinal sweep, is a, because it's such a magnificent uh, experience that really defies uh, proper description through the, you know, through words or the written word or the spoken word. It doesn't even come close. But, you know, for our purposes here, using the spoken word, the spinal sweep uh, can be seen as a dividing line between an awakening event and a continuing, a continuing activation event. Uh, and the way you can really see that is you can look at some of the phenomena that occurs uh, in the activated state, all of a sudden, you, you you know, your fingers want to go into the Gyan Mudra, thumb tip and forefinger tip uh, together. Uh, you may begin to pray more, or you may feel the need to meditate. You may feel the need to take a Vipassana retreat type of experience. You may feel the need to find a book. You, you'll feel this urge to look up certain books and, you know, and, and if, if you're able to surrender to that urge, you'll find yourself going into areas of Eastern mysticism or Hinduism or Christianity, sacred Christianity, some of these areas that start to talk about in the Christian context, Holy Spirit or the fire of God or the fire of Christ or in the Hindu context, you know, Shakti, Shiva. In the Buddhist context, you'd see that as various different charismas that a person is having. And, you know, in, in the... The, the the qigong qigong is typically more of a uh, of a chi centered energetic exercise. They don't really get into the kundalini, although you know with a lot of chi you can jump start the kundalini. A lot of people will come into kundalini through the uh, astral projection experiences, and and you know they'll receive a guidance in the astral projection department that says, hey, you need to start looking into kundalini, and boom, an activation has a sequence has begun in them because. You know, astral projection. When you receive uh, information uh, in the in the astral projection uh, environment, it becomes very important to you. It becomes very it becomes uh, you know quite the uh, priority. And so you know, all of this begins to build and build and build and build, and uh, boom! All of a sudden, you know, one day or evening, night or early morning, you have. Uh, the spinal sweep come up to you, and after you have blending with divine consciousness, which is really what the spinal sweep is all about, after you have that that divine signature on your soul that, yes, this person has merged with God, God has merged with this person, this person has merged with God, that is the beginning of the awakening. And this, this will begin to have uh, uh, many, many different consequences and many different spiritual phenomena that occur, uh, you know, in the awakening part of the journey as opposed to the activation part of the journey. And a lot of people have a hard time uh, making the changes, you know, all the, the readings and the meditations and the yogas and the different energetic uh, ideologies that they've adopted up to the point you know, and to the activation and then through the activation into the the spinal sweep, but it doesn't necessarily apply to the awakening events afterwards. You have to be willing to change. You have to be willing to let the thumbprint of the divine that is now upon your soul begin to dictate what it is you do and how it is you do and why it is that you do what you're doing. And so this is a very... Uh, strong delineation between the activated state and the awakened state. Um, some of some activation states are very very short for people. Uh, some people have an activated state that is just a few minutes long. Uh, some people, you know, they pop, and when they pop, uh, 
they pop right into a spinal sweep. And so immediately they're engulfed in the divine union, immediately. And so, you know, their, their, uh, their activated state could have lasted just a few seconds. So this is something that people need to, to also consider. The awakened state lasts, as I mentioned before, lasts for the rest of your life and, and, uh, and into the next incarnation. Uh, this is what has happened with me. You know, I, all the skills that I had as, a, as an awakened child came to me from the previous life where I had awakened the Kundalini. Uh, uh, mine was a shamanic awakening. Uh, the, uh, so, so as you have the Kundalini in this life, so may it come with you into the next. If, you're karmically, uh, if your karmic arrangement is that which supports that type of an effusion. I don't want to say, you know, with absolute authority, oh, you know, when it wake up, wakes up in you, then you'll have it in your next life because, you know, there are other mitigating circumstances that, that come into play. So uh, after you have the awakening, though, it will typically last for the rest of the corporeal life uh, that a person is living uh, in this, in this uh, streaming moment right now so uh, and let's see Starlin asks again she says Starlin I forget if it's a man or a woman but they say <laughs> is it possible to have the spinal sweep and not recognize it especially if it happens when very young well you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put uh, parameters on what is possible within the Kundalini and what isn't typically though it's it's an unmistakable experience when you, when you merge with God. Uh, it's such a huge experience that that uh, it's it's uh, it's exceptionally recognizable. And now, if you're you know sure if you if you have no uh, reference for the divine within this society or this understanding of that you know your current society represents God to be then a child would have a, a spinal sweep and not recognize it. But uh, you have to remember that, you know, this isn't, these are not accidents. You know, there's very little of an accidental nature to the kundalini. If a child is actually having a true kundalini uh, spinal sweep, well, that is an, uh, an intentional uh, uh, experience that that child is having, and it is controlled by the divine, not by the child. Just as the same as when an adult has the spinal sweep. That is controlled by the divine, not by the will of the, of the adult human being. And so same with the, with the child. Um, if, uh, if you're seeing a spinal sweep as being some sort of a phenomena that, that all the kids have every day, well, that's not going to be the case. That's not going to be the case at all. They may just be having, you know, spinal... Uh, Pickups, or you know, maybe a spinal petty mal, or you know, something of that nature. Uh, but uh, and sometimes the kids will have that, you know, with with their neural system still developing, and the and the uh, you know the integration of new neural systems. If you're talking about an infant or you know a younger child, you know they'll have those spasms anyway, and that doesn't necessarily indicate a spinal sweep. Uh, so I guess you know, Starling, your question is. Uh, is it possible to have spinal sweep and not recognize it, especially if it happens when you're young? Well, I'm going to have to say anything is possible, but not everything is probable. Okay, not everything is probable. But thank you for asking such excellent questions. And Starlin is typing again, and, and while they're typing, uh, oh, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. Amelia, do you have another question? Yes, indeed. There was some discussion as well about spontaneous awakenings, you know, unprepared for awakenings that came out of the blue. As a person asked a question as to why some of us have Kundalini awaken while others don't. Okay, well, <coughs> while you were reading that, uh, actually right before you started to read that, my Kundalini came in and wanted me to bring up something. So I'm going to bring that in first. Hold that thought, though, okay? Sure. The, the Kundalini wanted me to bring up spontaneous human combustion. Uh, uh, spontaneous human combustion, 
does not necessarily happen with, with a Kundalini awakening. And there's a lot of uh, disinformation on the Internet right now that equates spontaneous human combustion, which means, you know, the person just catches on fire and burns to a cinder right there, you know, at the restaurant or on the dance floor, sitting on the easy chair, whatever they're doing, and they burn. And they burn so hot that they burn at temperatures that approach what the surface of the sun is. And so it burns so hot and so fast that the person's shoes and, and maybe even their feet will still be in their shoes and they won't be singed. Um, it basically seems to be more of a thoracic type of a phenomena, but it is not. It is not associated with Kundalini. It is a short circuiting of the body, no doubt about that. And it, and there are divine energies that that are that are uh, utilized during those types of a, of an experience or exit. Uh, but uh, they are, you know, spontaneous human combustion is not in any way, shape, or form, uh, a, a kundalini phenomena and forget uh, and, and, and really take yourself out of, the, uh, out of the purview of people that would present such a fearful-based scenario into a kundalini equation, especially, you know, these folks who have never even experienced the kundalini but just decide to, to drive the nails of fear into people who are approaching it. Uh, spontaneous human combustion is not part of the equation. Now, as I said before, with uh, with Starlin's question about the possible, not you know anything is possible, but uh, there's a very low pattern of probability associated with spontaneous human combustion and the Kundalini. Mm. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, please, uh, could you ask your question again, Amelia? I will, of course. Actually, Chris, and about that, that's good to hear because I can remember at one stage hearing a good bit ago, hearing information or misinformation like that, and at the time, I was experiencing intense burning heat in my body. And I rem- it, <laughs> and, and, and hearing that information slightly freaked me out. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, and at that's the time, the you know. That's, that's, that's yeah. the whole purpose of why those people put that out there in the first place is to scare people away from their own enlightenment. Mm. And in a way, I can see how the Kundalini would say, okay, yeah, 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 let that, let that be there for the moment. Uh, just to, because if people allow themselves to be frightened by, uh, uh, by incorrect information to that degree, then maybe they shouldn't be having the kundalini in the first place. Mm. But no, but I was just told to correct that that myth. So you know, spontaneous human combustion and kundalini are not in any way typically associated with each other. Mm. Good. Um, it's more associated so with alcoholism. It is. It's, it's, yeah, you know, yeah. if you look at some of the histories of the people that have had it, you know, they've been drinking. They've been drinking brandy. You know, they, I mean, so there's certain levels of exits that I think uh, a soul is developing, and uh, one of those exits would be spontaneous human combustion. Go ahead. Okay, so the question was, um, why do some of us have Kundalini awaken while others do not? Well, that's a fairly simple question. Um, you know, why Why do you, well, I'll just put it into the evolutionary category. People, some people reach a level of evolution, spiritual evolution, through the many lifetimes that they have lived. And, and through those accrued lifetimes, they have been able to reach a, a current lifetime, which allows them to take the next step into becoming human divine at the same time okay not everybody has lived those levels of lifetimes uh, not everybody needs to live the same amount of lifetimes you know so the the next obvious question would be well okay how many lifetimes equals a kundalini awakening event and it's you know it's 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 an unlimited number a lot of it depends on a person and how how quickly they're willing to learn their lessons and how, how, you know, how slowly they need to learn their lessons. So 
why a person would have kundalini in this life and the next person wouldn't. There are so many different reasons. Let's just take a spouse. Let's take you and John, shall we? So Amelia and John live together, and you know they've been you know married for thousands <laughs> of years now, and they have many many children, and they have you know all kinds of uh, properties, and and you know they're very well ensconced into the Irish society. They you know they know who they are, how they are. And, and they have a good degree of communication about what each each other expects from the other and what they can receive. However, uh, you know, Amelia, in this context, has has really been allowed to open up her kundalini really, really well. Uh, she's been able to really take instructions. She's been able to find sources of information. She's been able to... in incorporate the many different uh, very, very strong changes and very, very strong experiences associated with awakened kundalini, including spinal sweeps and including uh, spiritual awareness and spiritual communications and entities and kriyas and all the majorly, majorly strange and bizarre uh, tests that I put her through. So, So, you know, she's been able to do that, but she hasn't worked alone with this. She has had to have the support of her husband, John. And even though John will get some of the some of the kundalini, you know, which which you know he would get that activated just by being within uh, an awakened person's radiance anyway. But the kundalini has seen the the uh, has seen fit to to control the awakening to such a degree that he can be. A, a, a support structure for uh, Amelia's Kundalini, and you know, as she goes through all of these reality bending experiences, well, he can be that rock, he can be that mountain, he can be that anchor into the earth, the 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 physical earth, and and this allows her a measure of safety where she knows that that uh, that she'll be well taken care of. Uh, should anything weird happen, you know, he's not going to jump the gun and, like, throw her into a psych ward. I'm looking for wood here. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> not gonna, hopefully not going to do that. <laughs> I say this because I know he's listening right now. Um, um, and, and so this gives Amelia, you know, great levels of freedom to just surrender into the teachings, just surrender into the experience. Like right now, uh, uh, you know, Amelia is having a very, very strong experience. And I'm going to let her describe that for you. Go ahead, Amelia. I'll put myself in the blue. And, <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not too sure. There's a lot of things going on at the moment. And perhaps... Prism is speaking about prism come back. Are you speaking about my tooth? <laughs> um, yes, it's about your, your okay, dental. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. Well, I for for many a time, for quite a long time, I have had issues with my teeth. Um, I have an ongoing issue with the deep pocket and infection in my in in, in a particular tooth, and the t- and it has been you know um, held and healed and. Um, on a continuous basis with the kundalini, but the time has come that, the, you know, something really needs to be done. And I have been in a lot of pain, in a lot of pain. And um, I spoke with Chrism, and Chrism placed, um, it's a form of scatter field upon and within the area of my tooth. I mean, he can speak himself about what he saw because I, I don't know, but what I, I can feel that what actually began to happen was the intense pain which was running from that tooth in the front right up through my nose into my eye and into my head. I mean, it was quite intense. It was, um, you know, it, it was really, really difficult to live with. Well, after Chrism placed the scatter field within and upon that area, there was a, a change. I could feel it. First of all, I had some visuals happen, and I began to see some things. But leaving that aside, um, I am now very, very aware 
of that within within my I can feel it I can feel it and while I'm still aware of the the infection that's there and a certain sensation within we we'll say that line of infection that is running right up into my palate and beyond all of the um the pain is being held and balanced by the kundalini and this has been happening i think this is the second or third day and i am having the work done next monday and it is an incredible thing to feel this and um, it's a gift of grace from the kundalini within chrism to me and um it's amazing it is just amazing and um, yeah well, uh, you know, and, and, and you know, let's let's take the whole idea of chrism out of this. It's just a gift of grace. It's a gift of the kundalini, straight up kundalini, and yeah. and uh, you know, just so people know how this was applied. It is a form of a scatter field, the same way I give the shakti pod, but in this case, the field was inserted in the entire um, upper mandible area. Uh, a, a, a very, very bright, I can see it right now, a very, very strong, strong field of, of density, of light, a density, how do I say that? Uh, it's, a, it's a form of dense light, I guess. It's a heavy light. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to begin to talk about it? quite difficult <laughs> yeah yeah so anyway <laughs> it works that's all yeah that's what matters uh, it, it does work um while amelia was was uh, telling her story uh, about this uh kundalini was coming to me and 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 uh, uh <laughs> and uh i have an idea of what uh would like she would like to discuss today so um, and that has to go. That goes along with the last, uh, um, the last thing that that uh, it wanted to talk about: spontaneous human combustion. Kundalini is not of Satan. Kundalini is not of the devil. Kundalini is not in any way associated, in any way, shape, or form, with satanic practices or with sexually galvanized BDSM. And I'm just going to take a wild stab with BDSM. I think that stands for bondage. D, bondage. Uh, bondage. Um, BD. Bondage, domination, sadomasochism. There we go. I think that's it. Anyway, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it is not associated with that. These are all things that are associated with the lower aspects of the lower chakras. And if, if Kundalini is working on them at all, it's working to clear them out of your system. So, so, so Kundalini doesn't really have the, the, the affectation or the association with some of these more ego-based creative outlets for, for sexual frustration or for uh, religious persecution or human judgmentalism upon each other. Kundalini is not a negative force, even though it does deal with the polarities of positive and negative. It doesn't do that within, say, a judgmental or a an attack-oriented uh, uh, venue. It's it's far more dealing with the opposites that should attract. Opposites that attract, because as they attract themselves towards each other, that which is in between. Uh, becomes uh, very, very, how do I say it, um, condensed, very, very condensed. And in that, in that pressing together are certain toxicities released through our system that we've had there for many, many, many lifetimes or many, many years. And as the kundalini begins to compress these imbalances out of our system through the positive and negative poles of our experience, uh, so will we experience some of these these toxifications leaving us. But once again, as I try to teach people, don't attach to the phenomena. Recognize the, the phenomena. Ha, let the phona, phenomena occur. Don't try to resist it. But don't attach to it either. 
Attachment is a very powerful thing, and it keeps you stuck in certain areas of the of the experience that perhaps you don't need to be stuck on because, but because you don't know not to attach, then you're you're, you're attaching to all of it, which can make things go very 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 long, uh, far far too long. And just the same as a as a as a beautiful ripe apple will rot if it's not taken care of or consumed in the amount of time. So can certain kundalini qualities uh, develop a rot within the system. And this typically uh, uh, develops into a stagnant energetic response. And these are the things that begin to eat away at the uh, synovial cartilage uh, in the joints, in the ball joints, and in the shoulders, the knees, the ankles, the toes, the fingers, the elbows, uh, the neck, uh, and, you know, as you have the kundalini and you're not doing service for people or you're not doing something that is in some way helpful to society with the use or, uh, or the, at least the expression of the radiance of kundalini, well, then, you know, there's a good opportunity for you to experience a stagnant energetic response. Quite painful, I must say. I've had them. Very, very, very painful and not something that you want to experience. Uh, imagine what it is to have a broken bone and then have the two jagged edges of the bone rubbed together. That gives you an idea of the level of excruciation that occurs. So, you know, Kundalini teaches us, uh, teaches us about our inactivity, teaches us about our activity. You know, what is the appropriate activity? What isn't the appropriate activity? Lying is not an appropriate activity. When I, when I, you know, a lot of people are trying to sign up on the, uh, on the Facebook uh, Kundalini Awakening uh, um, exclamation point group, which is great, and I welcome everybody to do that. But a lot of them are lying, and you can see the lie. And, you know, those people who lie either about their gender or about their name or about who they are, whatever, those folks don't typically get on. Not to say that, that all of them, you know, are, are filtered out, because that's not true. But uh, a lot of them are filtered out. Uh, so, so remember, you know, the kundalini within you understands the truth from a lie. It understands when you tell a lie and when you're saying the truth. And it will typically reward you one way or the other. Uh, a stagnant energy response is, is a reward of inaction a reward of laziness, a reward of, of uh, having but not holding very well. Okay. Uh, part of that can be due to a lack of information. And, and, uh, and uh, so you, you also need to look into your own equation, your own kundalini awakening, and begin to trust. Begin to trust what's happening. Trust the intuitions that you're receiving. Look at them. Make sure that, of course, they they uh, they reflect noble qualities of, say, self-discipline, uh, uh, self-improvement, or the 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 selfless service uh, for another person. You know, things of that nature. But uh, it's you are being observed. You are being watched, and it is it is paying attention, even if you are not. So. So, so Kundalini doesn't deal with negativity such as demonics, you know, unless that comes through in an entity form. Uh, then it will, you know, it'll see if there's a teaching opening for you to experience, say, a demon in, in, your, in your lifetime or in your Kundalini awakening. It'll look at the pros and cons, and it will decide if you get to experience that demonic force. Don't think Kundalini is not in control when you have a negative experience. It most certainly is. But it also understands that you must have this negative experience. You must have it. Because you're not going to learn any other way. Most people gravitate towards, you know, pleasure. They gravitate towards pleasure because it feels good. They, they shy away from pain. But some teachings can only come from pain. And in those teachings, because people won't gladly, willingly jump into the volcano, you know, they have to, <laughs> the volcano has to jump into them. And there you have it. Okay, so, so much, and I'm going to say most of what you read about Kundalini on the web, on the Internet, is not going to be true. It may have some snippets of truth, but 
for the most part, it is, it is not true. It is not Kundalini Reiki. Uh, Re- the Reiki system started, honestly enough, but they became corrupted when greed and money and uh, mixing and matching of techniques. I mean, they lost the purity, um, you know, not long after Dr. Usui passed. Okay. And, they, you know, they started getting in big arguments about, oh, who's the true lineage holder? Oh, it's this or oh, it's that or these folks or those folks. You know, the ego really inserted. And Dr. Usui didn't leave any real good instructions with regards to behavioral modifications of the other four bodies of expression. And so the teachings weren't given to the Reiki people that would allow the Reiki people to to uh, to evolve, you know, in a in, say a more precious, honest space. Uh, but so for the most part, you know, you need to really make a separation between Reiki and Kundalini, especially as Reiki is practiced in the Western civilizations. Uh, I'm sure there's still some levels of, of pure Reiki that's that's occurring somewhere, but. But uh, they're not that popular, and they're probably not selling it or selling a mastership for $30, you know, if you just go to this website and, you know, like it, and then, oh, pay them 30 bucks, and, oh, now you're a master. Uh, <clears throat> you know, the, 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 the cheapening of, of, of what a commercialism does to an experience is significant. So Reiki is not the answer Kundalini in this in this scenario. Uh, another another scenario is this is not uh, this is not in any way a uh, I'll stand by a moment. This is not in any way a a condition of of a, of a satanic religious force. Uh, this has nothing to do with Satan, except as the individual ego brings Satan into the equation. And this also goes for Lucifer. And this also goes for angelics. You know, people have this great need to have an angel floating over them and protecting them. I think uh, Archangel Michael is great for that. You know, everybody calls in Michael. Oh, Michael, you know, do my bidding and protect me from this or that. And you know, you can only imagine. Uh, you can only imagine how how the true Archangel Michael must must really be either irritated with that, or just doesn't even really doesn't even really care to know about it. Uh, n- nobody is coming to our rescue from an angelic uh, format, unless, of course, the angelic format is what the Kundalini wants us to come into. Uh, with regards to just a second here, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna move here. Just a second. Okay. Let's see how that works. Yeah, can still hear you, Chris, and so that's good. That's great. Okay, just stand by. Still hearing? Yes, Chris, I'm still hearing. This is actually good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so as you as you look through the web, this is not the uh, this is not that uh, it's, it's named after some Canadian city. Uh, 
some sort of a syndrome where people start laughing and rolling all over the floor. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, this is not that. <laughs> Kundalini is not that. Kundalini is not uh, just having some psychic skill. Like some people will be born, they'll be, you know, fairly telepathic or or perhaps they, uh, you know, there's these natural channelers that channel every, everything in the universe and, you know, they go around making their money off of channeling. Uh, this is not that either. Kundalini doesn't typically open itself to commercial use. Sometimes it will, sometimes, but not always. And, and for, the, for the most part, I would say it doesn't. Um, although I have to say, you know, to be fair, it led me into a, you know, a, a casino to, to, to make money, and, and that did happen. Um, but it's not something that I keep going back to try to recreate. So anyway, yeah, yeah. I just my my uh, my thought got a little broken up in there. So go ahead and ask me a question, and and, uh, and I'll pick it up from where your question leads us. Okay, Chrism. So um, you know there was some discussion as well about other realities that Kundalini people and um, become aware of, I suppose. And somebody asked the question, you know, are these other realities and um, more a change of perception rather than an actual, real, different reality. Oh no, I, I remember hearing or, or hearing that question. Actually, a, a good question to ask. Oh, let's take care of that. That's good, actually. That sound is better, Chris, than even again. Thank you. I'm, I'm hearing you the echo from you, so I'm going to go put you in the blue for a second. Okay. Okay, so the, the the question is uh is is the reality different or is 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 it a perceptual change and and you you really can't have a perceptual change without changing the reality so you know in a way that 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 question answers itself because when you have a a change of perception, you also have a change of reality, even though that reality may still agree uh, with people and, and with other people's experience, uh, you can't have a perceptual change without changing the way you perceive a, a, a given event or a given thing. And so that was, uh, that was in response to a post by Magdalene de Deus, and I'm going to go ahead and read her post so that people have an idea of what we're talking about here. And um, uh, you'll notice that Magdalene has, has begun to write more about uh, her experiences. And, and I, you know, it's really, really good. It's been a long time. She's been working with me for quite some time now, and she's really starting to bloom. And so I just want to say congratulations to you, Magdalene, for that. And here we go. Looks like... Uh, this is what she wrote. She says, Dear all, since having the Kundalini, and especially more recently, I have been feeling very sensitive. I kept telling Kristen that really it is difficult because it also means that I would be hurt very easily with the slightest comment from another person. I found it emotionally tiring. Kristen explained to me that several times that this is all happening for a purpose and that my being more sensitive would eventually allow me to tune into other people's feelings and be able to understand and know more about them so that I'm able to help them with my kundalini. I think that this is indeed what is starting to happen. For example, on two or three occasions, I've been given to feel something about people I see at work that I was not aware of before. But most of all, this is what happened yesterday. I was sitting in this new and beautiful tram that has just been inaugurated in my town. Uh, she lives in eastern France. Uh, as I was sitting there, uh, the tram actually goes through the rough part of town, and as I was sitting there looking at people, I could feel the recognition and happiness they felt of having such a modern and beautiful means of transport going through their area. I'm actually starting to feel bliss as I'm writing these words. When I shared this later with Christian, he told me I was able to actually feel the gratitude and feelings that those people were having at the time. So especially 
Since yesterday, I feel more grateful for being more sensitive, even though it has indeed meant being hurt more easily. Because I can tell that Kristen's explanations are indeed starting to reveal themselves as being true, and I found yesterday's experience in the tram particularly touching. And uh, another Kundalini person, you know, suggests that, uh, that uh, let's see here. Oh, she may have taken off. <laughs> Oh boy. Anyway, somebody asked if if it was a uh, if it was just a change in in the perception, and uh, you know, a perception is is really not as static as you might think. Certainly within the Kundalini, but uh, when you change the perception, you change the reality. When you change the reality you also change the perspective. So I will suggest that it becomes a new reality. With every perceptual change that occurs, a new reality is, is lifted into the equation. And a new reality can be as little as, you know, as just, you know, having a different kind of Kriya come, you know, uh, and start to move and work with a different mus- muscle system or group of muscle systems that you haven't felt before. That would be a perceptual change. Or, you know, having a different type of an entity. I know that the praying mantises were brought up by me a little while back with regards to uh, kundalini creatures. And uh, Magdalene sees a lot of these things in real time. And uh, so, you know, she would see a praying mantis or she would see a uh, you know, a dragonfly or a butterfly or a spider, or, you know, or things of that nature. And, uh, she, you know, begin to change her reality about her experiences, say, as a child with a butterfly or with a, with a honeybee or a bumblebee or with a dragonfly or a praying mantis or things of, you know, the kundalini creatures that, that we're given as examples to in this world. So it's a new reality that has really uh, changed it. But you could also say it's, it's a sharpened reality. It's a reality that the more truth that is worked into that reality, the sharper the reality becomes, which, you know, then the sharper the reality becomes, the, the greater levels of change in the perceptions occur. So the, that's what I'm going to give you for that one, Amelia. <laughs> Are you there? Did you go to the bathroom? No, no, no. I went. I went through. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chrism. Yeah. I. I. Um. Could I say, you know, for me, that um, and I don't know. It's when this other reality is not rooted in a preconceived thing. It's like the reality happens, and that heralds change. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? It's like with it's trumpets like and everything. Excuse me? Herald, heralding change with trumpets? Oh, heralding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Did I actually say, did I actually say that? <laughs> heralding change. But what I mean is the reality is the first experience, the different reality. It's not yeah. that my perception or my thought or my um, contemplation changes. The, re- the reality is the first action that changes. You know, that's right. all. Anyway. Right. Well, and it can go, it can go back and forth, too. You can have, phenomena can change your reality. And the phenomena comes directly from a, are you, say again? I'm sorry? Well, that's what I'm saying. Badly, obviously. <laughs> ah, okay. Yes. Phenomena so, heralds um, change. Okay. But it's true yeah, enough. Yeah. It's true enough. So, so, uh, so yeah, let's move on to the next question. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> so another person um, was speaking, I'm recalling this now because I don't have any other questions, but they, they were speaking about being unprepared, you know, for the shock of the spontaneous and um, continuous awakening experience they had. And um, she commented that she can't turn it off. And well, so you maybe you, you can don't get say to turn Kundalini like off. You don't get to turn Kundalini off. Once Kundalini is up and going, there is no off switch. 
And because there is no off switch, the person will keep trying to find an off switch. <laughs> you know, if they, you know, they, people don't like not having control over their bodies. And so when they, when the Kundalini comes and begins to control their body, uh, they don't like it. And they go into resistance. Uh, or, you know, and some of them kind of intuitively know that they can't resist this and they don't want to resist this, and so they don't. But most of the people will reach into their handy bag of resistance options that they think will work or that they're willing to try, and they'll attempt to control this uh, either through medical means or through spiritual means or through energetic means or through the means of just willpower alone, and none of those things are going to work. Now, you can damage the system to a point where, where the, um, the, uh, the, the phenomena can become less compromising to you. You can take, you know, you can become a zombie, and then, of course, you know, a zombie will do what kind of zombies do. They just kind of shuffle around. Uh, you know, they can, they can have that kind of a drug-induced experience, you know, a chemical cage. Uh, but it doesn't turn the kundalini off. It just puts it on, you know, puts the phenomena aspect of it on hold. Uh, same with, uh, you know, with any of the, quote-unquote, managing drugs or minerals, you know, that they like to pump into a person's bloodstream. It's not going to, it's not curing it, you know. They, they love to say that, cured and released, you know. They make you sign the form saying cured and released, like that actually happened. But it doesn't happen. Okay. Nobody gets cured from kundalini. Nobody gets released from it either. Okay. And so it's, it's <laughs> I see Elizabeth is going back and forth here uh, um, on the chat room there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so nobody is released from it and nobody is, you know, people are going to resist it as much as they possibly can. And, and that's just going to cause more pain. That's going to cause, you know, more of an issue um, with it. So, you know, that is something that, that you would like to, to uh, oh, <laughs> you would like to look into. Um, and, uh, and the Kundalini Awakening Systems 1338 asks, a Amy, so A-M-Y, Amy questions from the chat room. So I guess Amy is writing a question from the chat room here. So that's good. Well, we'll see what Amy wants to ask. Does Amy want to ask something, Amelia? <laughs> no, Chris, and that was me with a misprint. Oh, oh, any questions from the chat room, I just asked the guy. <laughs> but it came out as Amy, so pardon yeah. me. Uh, Actually, mm. Elizabeth has a question there, and she's mm. asking, I was wondering about sudden depression. That does not seem to come from anywhere. Well, it's always going to come from somewhere, but it's not going to come from a place that maybe you're cogent or conscious of. Uh, sometimes with bliss, if you have bliss and then you have the absence of bliss, that can bring on a sudden depression. Another form of thing is you can be, you can be um, tied into other people in, in an unconscious way, and, and uh, you can feel depression coming off of them. People spread, you know, what do they say? Misery loves company, right? Well, that's the truth. And so uh, you may want to look at the people that you're around at this point. You know, who are you spending time with that's depression? Or what kind of news or, or fiction or, or interaction are you, are you having with other people that, that may uh, contain depressive components that the kundalini in you would say, ah, oh, okay, Elizabeth needs to work on this, uh, so let's give her this depression. And, oh, look at all those depressive examples we have out there for her. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Kundalini, you're, 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 because most of us uh, perceive our life through the lens of the ego, um, you know, the ego is not going to be able to figure everything out. It's going to want to. It's going to try to. It's going to try to figure everything out. But it's not going to be able to. And so when you come into a sudden absorptive depression or a sudden absorption that, uh, 
that is triggered through uh, kundalini phenomena. Don't you don't want to judge the experience through the lens of the ego. You might want to just like look at that and go, "Wow, what do I have to learn from this?" So, uh, if, you know, a person's feeling depression, and all of a sudden it's just there out of the blue. Well, what what has triggered that, and what what am I feeling, and what am I seeing, and what what is my intuition telling me? What is kundalini um, communicating to me about this right now? What's going on here? And instead of seeing it in a shall we say in a depressive oh I don't feel so good sense you know look at it as another uh, another opportunity to learn more about your own equation and about how to make that equation that much better for yourself you know look into what's going on with you what's going on around you what's going what has that happened to you already or what is about to happen if you have things planned in, in the future so Take a look at that and, and, and don't see sudden depression as something that is negative, even though I understand for the most part we'll label it that way. But look at the hidden gems, the hidden jewels of information that are hidden within a sudden depressive experience. Next question there, Amelia Santara. Well, I... Don't have another question, Chrism. I saw I saw um, Sashi typing. Yes, Sashi, good timing there. <laughs> can you read that, or shall I read it, Chrism? I can ahead. read it for you. Does Does there ever come a time in one's process where Shakti path is no longer needed, or is it a good idea to pursue because it might develop an unnecessary reliance on the Shakti path? Well, I don't give myself Shakti Pot anymore. Never did, actually. Uh, so there's a time, yeah, there's a time when you don't need to be Shakti Pot. And, and that, uh, as far as being addicted to Shakti Pot, sometimes people form those addictions, but the Kundalini won't let it go too long. You have to remember that my Shakti Pot is really based on how a person practices the safeties. If the person practices the safeties well, then event, they're not going to need my Shakti Pot at all. Like I said before, the, the Kundalini Awakening safeties are a standalone activation sequence. I mean, you will activate with that. And uh, hopefully through that activation, you'll, you know, it will be nurtured into an awakening, an, an awakening scenario. So, uh, yeah, people sometimes become bliss bunnies, and they think that every time they, really, they receive a Shakti Pot, well, they're going to go right into bliss with it. And, and I really would prefer that people not even experience bliss than if, if, if it's going to form an addiction within them. I would prefer that people just, you know, do the safeties. Do the safeties. And, and let the safeties, let the, let the noble qualities of the safeties uh, speak for themselves. If you're practicing the safeties, do you need to do a Shakti Pot? Do you feel the need to do a Shakti Pot? Uh, you might answer this question for yourself, Ashi. Uh, do you want a Shakti Pot? What is the genesis of your question? What is happening in you, perhaps, that says, maybe, maybe I don't need to take another Shakti Pot. Maybe I'll just sit with what I got for a while. <coughs> Maybe you can, you know, another way of looking at it, well, maybe I'll just sit with what I've got for a while, or maybe the Shakti Pod is something that will take me into the next level. You know, there are very, very many ways that the Shakti Pod will affect a person, but it really comes down to the individual. Um, I don't receive Shakti Pod from anybody. I never have. So is Shakti Pod absolutely necessary for everyone? No. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Is it helpful? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, if you're in the proximity of a person that can give, you know, this kind of the quality of Shakti Pot, then yeah, I would say take it. If you're not in that proximity, well, the Kundalini will take care of you. If you're happy with where you are and you don't feel like you need to move any anymore, then, you know, a person doesn't need to take the Shakti Pot. But you have to remember, who is making this decision? Is it your ego? Or is it another part of you? Who is making that decision? Who is making that question? What part of the individual says, well, do I need this anymore? I don't know. You know, what, 
what part of that question, you know, what part of the bodies of expression does that question uh, activate? And so, you know, a person I think would do best to look at that. And if, if you're developing an, uh, uh, an unnecessary reliance on the Shakti pot, then stop it. I don't think there's any arm twisting on, on you know, taking the Shakti pot with, with anyone. Uh, you either want to do the Shakti pot or you don't. And there is no judgment one way or the other. Now, let's say for Fashi, for, for, for a person in, in say, Fashi's level of, of Kundalini, you know, he's getting a lot of experiences lately. He's getting a lot of phenomena lately. And so, you know, it might be, you know, part of his equation to ask that question and then maybe make another decision about it or talk to me more about it, however you wish. Uh, but um, the other way to look at it is if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Okay. If it's self-sustaining, if you feel that you have a self-sustaining uh, Kundalini equation, then you know adding more gas isn't going to hurt it. It's self-sustaining. You know. I mean, so look at it, feel it, and and the person will need to make their own determination. Um, not every person can give Shakti Pot in these ways, and so. You know, there's that to consider as well. So, does there ever come a time when one's process for Shaktipat is no longer needed? Yes, there comes that time. Uh, is it a good idea to pursue because it might develop an unnecessary reliance on Shaktipat? And I'm just going to add, or an addiction to Shaktipat. Well, if it's becoming an addiction, then don't do it. If it's becoming an unnecessary reliance, meaning unnecessary, unneeded, Reliance on Shakti Pot, don't do it. Just test it out. Test it out. Uh, I think uh, there's one, two, three, uh, at least three people here that are in the Shakti Pot uh, for this uh, autumnal equinox. Um, so, yeah, anybody's free to take themselves out of it. It's, it, and it, you know, there is no judgment. There's no judgment on that because sometimes, like if a person was having a lot of phenomena that was painful, a lot of headaches, things of that nature. You know, the scatter field would probably do something very different for them, very similar to what occurred to Amelia's teeth, uh, and, and, you know, move into a more uh, maintenance-oriented level so that the person can find the time to make the corrections they need to make. Uh, so sometimes that can occur. The one thing that you really want to understand is that the kundalini is smart. It's intelligent. Your kundalini hears you, knows what you think, knows what you've experienced, knows what your issues are. Ask your kundalini if, it, if you want to do the other shakti pot. And let it respond to you, and then you pay attention to that response. Okay? Now, let's see. We have 41 minutes left, and I would like to give out the phone numbers. Uh, area code is 347-934-0026. That's uh, 347-934-0026. Call in with any question or comment you'd like to make about your, the Kundalini Awakening experience. And in the meantime, I'm going to pop on over to Amelia, who's been patiently listening, not moving or shuffling papers. <laughs> Thank you. I have been patiently listening, and... That's interesting, an interesting question. I have, if I, can I speak about my Shakti Pot? Yes. I, Susan? Yeah. Um, I received my first, I have had a spontaneous Kundalini awakening, and, and, you know, it's slowing in me. It's fairly strong, but I always have um, asked to participate in the Shakti Pot, and each one of them has been very, very different because... You know, I practice the safeties and I do so very diligently, but I notice that each Shakti path brings something that the Kundalini, you know, deems necessary for me. And so it is never the same. Um, some, of, some Shakti paths have been very, what you would call, active, you know, with a lot of phenomena. Other um, Shakti paths have been very quiet. 
sometimes a Shakti Pak day in one of the chakras, you know, will bring a lot of challenge for me, exactly what I need. So for me, um, you know, asking to participate in the Shakti Pak is like four times every year where I have a week of focus on, you know, um, it's a very sacred time for me anyway, that particular week every year. And that's how I approach the Shakti Pat, and it's, it's a wonderful gift of grace to be in it and to receive, you know. Anyway. Well, well thank you. Thank you. And, and I, you know, if, if I had been able to find someone who gave the Shakti Pat based upon a practice that supported noble behaviors, I would have done it over and over and over and over and over. So I am, I am not outside of, of, you know, certainly in my early, in my early experiences, I am not uh, uh, afraid of receiving help. Matter of fact, I went, uh, you know, to my first uh, Kundalini Awakening uh, seminar, you know, with just to meet other people, just to, geez Louise, you feel so alone. At least back then, when when you know the internet was new and and you know and, and scenarios such as that would come up, so yeah, yeah, I would have taken the Shakti Pond, especially you know with the the tremendous level of cost that's associated with it, you know the financial cost of partake, participating in these Shakti Ponds, you know, could be quite inviting for somebody that didn't have any finances. <laughs> <laughs> well, just to say there, in case we have new listeners, Chris, and we're not talking about your Shakti Pat. Well, yes, we are, actually. No. We are talking. Huge, le- are talk- huge levels of cost. Oh, yeah, that was, that's called sarcasm, my dear. Sarcasm, yes. Sarcasm. Okay. Well, I heard you saying that. I know it's yours. He costs a huge amount. People do charge a huge amount of money for them. I know. I know. I know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I already, I already said at the beginning that, you know, it's, it's free. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, is there another question? Um, no. Not, I, I'm, no. Um, no. Well, let's just, let's just go ahead and <laughs> you know continue what I, Go ahead. What I, w- I would really, if, if it would be, I would love to hear the Radiant Sutra again, if that would be okay. It would, it's actually um, in the other, in the other room. room. Oh, Not, oh yeah. okay. I had to move to the weight room here. So okay. what I am going to do right now, though, is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have my little conversation that I like to have with my sleeping uh, brothers and sisters. And so I'm going to begin that right now. Oh Gana um Tuam Gana Patiya Bamahe, Kevin Kevinum Pam Shabastamam, Jeshtarajam, Ramina Braminam, Aspata Anaha, Nasim Bandu, T B C the Saranam. who are sleeping and who are listening to this conversation in your sleep. Let any blockages that you're not, that, that, that are waiting for you and getting in your way, you're not able to clear. Let the Kundalini help you clear. Let the, the Kundalini in this voice begin to help you clear the blockages to your own radiance. Take the lessons in the dreams. Take the lessons that this conversation brings into your dreams. Look at the symbols. Write down your dreams in the morning. And have a blessed, beautiful sleep. Oh. Sleep well, my friends.
and coming back into the conversation here with regards to what's being shown on the internet. Uh, so once again, I think I've tried to clear up, this is not about the devil, this is not about Satan, this is not about uh, being saved by Archangel Michael, uh, this is not about being a star seed. You know, people, I think, some people will be having Kundalini awakening phenomena and, and some of the star seed and these, these, these people that are out promoting a, um, a uh, system of enlightenment or ascension you know the you know the the word ascension is being used quite a bit these days with regards to uh symptoms that are more accurately about kundalini but it seems like they're borrowing terms from the kundalini in order to to uh, justify a a new and an improved uh level of spiritual uh, evolution towards ascension and these people just need to really just Forget about their ego because almost all of them you'll see very, very little in the way of ego modulation or behavioral moderation. And so with the ego, in, you know, going full tilt, you know, bring me money, bring me power, bring me, uh, you know, all of these qualities that the ego wants, you know, well, let's just make up a new enlightenment system or a new ascension system symptom and we'll, we'll go ahead and take, you know, the phenomena that comes from Kundalini, we'll just apply it to our ascension symptom. Yeah, baby. There we go. And so a lot of people kind of get sucked into that because it's a short path and it's not something that they really have to practice that too hard. And, you know, they get a lot of people that are just like searching and yearning and, you know, the, the ascension sounds so cool to people and, you know, have any clue about what that means. But these types of scenarios are not indicative of the kundalini. They're indicative of a person that's using kundalini phenomena to support a program that that typically has their commercial interests at heart, their book or their seminar or their whatever it is. So I would also be uh, wary of those types of scenarios. This, this, let's also look at the fallen angels. You know, all these things exist, but they're just not taking that much of an interest. They've got their own scenario to work through. And, and humans, you know, except for the, say, some of the ones that are being propelled to do negative things to this world, such as, you know, those in Denmark right now who are doing the grind. Oh, Denmark, how could you be so amazingly savage? Amazing, Denmark. You need to stop that grind, and you need to stop it now, period. And that's all I'm going to say to the Danes that may be listening to this. Uh, you need to stop that grind. That's hideous. Absolutely hideous. And I don't care for how many centuries you've been doing it. Just you've been doing something really wrong for many, 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 many years. And you need to stop it now. Or, you know, we'll look over there, you know, to Ukraine and all the problems that are there. And, you know, I got called up or I got uh, messaged from one of the listeners who says, Oh, Kristen, you don't know what you're talking about with, you know, the, you know, Ukraine and all that. And you need to listen to my side because my side's the right side. And I just want to sit here and, you know, listen to you say that you're wrong. You know, so, yeah, whatever. So, so yeah, so with what's going on with the Soviet Union and its expansion and, and with the NATO wanting to be galvanized back into an authoritative position and all of the lies and all of the, the supposed truths that are just basically forming around somebody else's agenda of what is right and what is wrong, you know, and I basically told them, well, you have, you know, your opinion and I have mine and that's the way it's going to be. And I, I welcome you to form your own opinion about you know what's happening in the in the uh, along the so or the uh, russian line with uh, ukraine and with uh, lithuania the baltics and some of the other areas here and don't don't listen to those warmongers you know these are the people that live for a war so that they can be helpful for the people who are in the middle of a war zone you know these people you know without a war they they've got nothing to do they love that war. They're part of the whole war economy. They just don't know it, or they choose not to realize it. You know, there's always different levels of truth. 
uh, coming out of a, a, a out of a place where so many altercations are taking place from Syria to Iraq to Afghanistan to Kurdistan to Tur to Tur you know the, the Turkey and all of these areas. Uh, you know, there is no one right side, one wrong side. There's a lot of wrong sides and very few right sides. You know, and, and I would advise those of you that have an early Kundalini awakening to stay out of a war zone. You know, I understand that you, you may want to, to, to give service and give love to people that are, that are having a difficult time, but you don't need to go into a war zone. If you go to a war zone... The entities are going to get you. The entities are going to get you. And when they get you, you know, they typically are hard to extract. These are the war zone entities. These are the entities that live, or should I say, they, they only really come out strong when there's severe damage going on, human carnage type of thing. And, and so you need to be, to be advised of that. New Kundalini Awakening people, don't choose sides. And then certainly don't choose a perverse side that is really, you know, in it to hurt people, which, whichever side that may be, okay? You know, and, and uh, don't use the excuse of, oh, well, I'm still human, therefore I still have my ego. Don't use that as an excuse to, 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 to squirm your way out of, out of, you know, acknowledging the fact that you're making a mistake, even though the entities inside you will will, will you know, stir you onward into continuing to make more mistakes. Okay. These war zones, you know, there is no innocent side, certainly not the United States, certainly not Syria, certainly not Britain, certainly not France, or any of them. Nobody's innocent here. Nobody's innocent. Putin's not innocent. You know, the Ukrainians and the, and the, the separatists are not innocent. Nobody's innocent Okay, but nobody's, you know, nobody's uh, got the high, high ground of truth yet, except for those that want the fighting to stop, you know, that are trying to make the fighting stop. Those are the people that need the support, okay? Not individual ideologies based upon ego-based assumptions of truth and, 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 uh, and rightness. That's just being a, a revolutionary zealot, you know, with, with as much bloodlust as the other side. So enough said about that. The grind, for those of you that don't know what the grind is, well, the Danes have seen fit that if they drive a, a, a school of beautiful dolphins onto the beach and then bludgeon them to death, or, or cut into them, or cut their heads off, or bleed them to death, as a rite of passage for their youth. Oh, yeah. Let's just soak them in blood. Okay, that needs to stop. And I'm going to go, you know, I'm out here in the public right now, and I'd say, Denmark, you need to get on with your evolution. That is not how we treat our fellow mortals on this world. That's how you treat them. But, you know, I'm going to suggest, you know, boycott all things Denmark until Denmark's able to evolve out of that. That's about as pathetic a thing as I've heard. All right. Enough said. Kundalini demands certain things of a person. It demands noble qualities to be expressed, not just to people, but to our fellow mortals on this world. It doesn't mean that you can't walk barefoot on the grass because you might crush a bug. That is always a possibility. And one or two of us or three of us might just get a virus. I mean, you know, because, you know, that, that stuff can happen. And the Kundalini controls it. it. Controls it for those who are awakened or in the activated stages. So it's it's a very you know it's a conversation I had with one of the students that was leaving the ashram yesterday about you know when we go away what happens to our dogs what happens to our friends that are left at home while we're out on vacation what kind of a vacation are they having okay what are the, do they have this day after day after day of total loneliness 
So, you know, how do we treat our fellow mortals in this life? Where do we make room in our garden for the bugs to have the whole plant with all the fruit? Where do we make room for them? Do we just go out and spray raid on the ants because they're cleaning up our mess? How do we treat the environment? How do you treat the environment, having awakened Kundalini? Think about that. And I know, I know, you know, we get a lot of groups coming on the, uh, on the uh, many different communities, you know. They're down on vegetarian, or no, they're down on carnivores and they're up with vegetarianism. They just don't, they don't take the leap that plants also have feelings and plants also have consciousness and plants also faint before you, you harvest them. This has been proven. As well as science can prove any of these things, it has been proven. It's uh, Christopher Bird in his book, The Secret Life of Plants. Check it out. It's an old book. It's written in the 70s. Check it out. Plants have feelings, too. You, you know, they, they did all kinds of tests. You know, and, the, and the, you know, a plant within a positive vibration is going to grow really, really well. A plant with a negative vibes will grow really, really poorly. A uh, plant grown with rock music will be very, you know, for some reason that produces a bad vibe for the plant. And classical music produces a good vibe for the plant. Uh, if you say I love you to the plant, it'll, it'll, it'll grow greatly. If you say I hate you to the plant, well, it won't grow so well. These are easy things to, you know, the arithmetic's not difficult here. So I, you know, I'm gonna once again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask people to pay attention to their kundalini. If it needs to have meat in your system, then have the meat. Be grateful for the meat. Have have gratefulness towards the animal that gave the ultimate gift of itself, so that your kundalini can give the ultimate gift of itself into you. And if then it's the same thing. If the kundalini is compelling you to be a vegetarian, then be that vegetarian. But have the gratitude towards the plant that is giving its all, all it can give to you so that the kundalini is able to give more of itself into you. Think about that. Think about that. Uh, for those of you who want to experience the Shakti Pot, I'll be putting on the scatter fields on uh, uh, September 12th at 3 in the morning, Pacific Standard Time. Uh, the, the scatter fields are basically a cellular consciousness that connects me to your energetic grid work. And from there, you know, the Shaktipat is given through the Kundalini's perception of your practice of the safeties. Or, as, as you know, um, um, Fashti's question may suggest, you don't have to do it every single time. It's not necessary. You can kind of... See how it works for you one way or the other. You don't have to do this. This is not, there is no, you must take the Shakti plot. <laughs> there is no rule like that. There's no rule like that. Well, let's see, in the 22 minutes that we have left, if there's anybody that has a question, the call in number is 347 934 0026. 347 934 0026. And Amelia, do you have any statements that you'd like to make? Oh, did I catch you in the bathroom? No. What no? is it with Could I please make a statement? I do not leave this room ever to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Sorry, the show. No, neither do I fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I give her I give it my full attention. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lag time between here and Ireland. When I, when I press her, when I put her into the red, there's a lag time, and so I always get to use that as an excuse. To, to be um, just an inch. This is really um, just a question that Steve asked there a while ago. It's not so much about the Kundalini, it's about the show. He's just wondering if anybody with an Apple iPad is able to get into the chat room once they're signed in with Blog Talk Radio. And I just, if I could suggest that maybe we could have a little bit of a conversation about that later, because people want to come into the chat room, but they're finding it very difficult. Well, so, thank you, um, Blog Talk. 
Yeah, would that be okay, Prism? You know, just yeah, sure, maybe, sure. Let's 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 yeah. talk about it right now. So the scenario is is I am broadcasting on a iPad two. Uh so I have my PC up because I can't get the, the flash chat without the PC. The the iPad won't do it. So I have the PC up for the chat room and for manipulating, you know, the microphone. But I am I am uh, broadcasting the sound is coming through the uh, the iPad to screen. Now it looks like Star Loon is writing something here. Uh, right, well. So I've been able to do this with the iPad completely. And let's see, Starlin says I use a desk, PC desktop, and I've always had trouble with <laughs> 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 Yes, yes, yes. Yes, welcome to the group there, Starling. <laughs> so uh, the iPad should get you in just fine, uh, but it won't get you into the chat room. So I think that's where yeah. the problem is, uh, Steve. You'll have to use a PC to get into the chat room. I can't. I, I can't get into. I can't even make a chat room with the iPad. They they they, they have you press a button and. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's the same, you, it's the same with me. <laughs> Starlin says, only for you, Kristen, do I do this blog talk. <laughs> if, there was a, if there was another option, you know, Starlin, I would do that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, so yeah, yeah. And I do want to, I want to thank uh, Amelia and John O'Connor. Uh, uh, Amelia is uh, the, the doppelganger for Amelia Santara. And uh, I'd like to thank the two of them for making this show work and supporting this show both both figuratively and realistically in every way, shape, or form. This show is because of them, totally because of them. And uh, I would like us all to express a, a moment of gratitude for John and Amelia O'Connor for, for creating this, this divine space that we've had for well over a year. Uh, coming up to a year and a half or more, you know, so that the Kundalini information can reach people who may not have a thousand million dollars that they want to pay for somebody's Shakti pot. So thank you, John. Thank you, Amelia Centara, for for this great gift that you're giving to others. Well, you're welcome. And I'm just actually feeling um, people. I'm just feeling a flow, a lovely flow there of gratitude from people. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so yeah. Uh, uh, with with regards to uh, uh, yeah, the the technology doesn't doesn't always get changed. We don't. If you don't, you can listen with the iPad too. You should be able to listen to the show. You just can't get into the chat room. Um. I don't know if that's the same for the for all the pads. Um, I'm sh- you know, maybe the Google Pad or the uh, the uh, Microsoft Windows 8 type of uh, electronic. The Android. Pad. Or the Android, you know, any of the telephone things. How many of you are on a telephone right now in the chat room? Anybody? Anybody on an Android telephone or an iPhone listening in the chat room? Oh, that's a good question to ask. Yeah, yeah. Is everybody in the chat room on a PC? Or are you using Androids? Or Good question. No yeah. one's typing. No one's typing. <laughs> oh, Elizabeth <laughs> is typing. <laughs> Laptop. Yeah, yeah. I know that some people have trouble, though, even with the laptop. I know that Eileen um, has trouble getting into the, um, the chat room. And um, constantly, and she uses oh, the laptop. So far, it's all uh, it's all laptops. Windows yeah. eight or Windows seven, according to Julie. Huh? Wow. The iPhone will only let you listen, not chat. Ah. Okay. Well, so once again, yeah. it's an Apple problem. They need to they need to get in touch with uh, Blog Talk Radio somehow so that uh, people can can participate better. 
But anyway, and, uh, Actually, that's a good point because I mean I've never complained as such, and I have to do what you do. I have a PC working in order to you know activate and um, interact in the chat room because the iPad doesn't work. So maybe I'll I'll connect with them and and find out about that. Yeah, maybe there's some protocol yeah. we can pass out. Okay, yeah. well, with the 15 minutes that we have left, I'd like to put out the phone number once again, 347-934-0026. If you have any question or comment you'd like to make about your Kundalini Awakening experience, um, you know, this, this is the time to do it. We'll stay on the air, say, for another minute or two just to give people an opportunity to reach for that telephone or or um, or ask a question in the chat room. but. But uh, uh, if you don't, do you have any other questions coming to you off of the groups? No, Chris, and I don't really, because you've answered oh, some oh, of them. Wait, work. wait a minute. I'm getting more that wants to come. Okay, so Kundalini will not force you to commit suicide. Kundalini will not force you to do anything that causes harm to yourself. Your ego will do that almost every single time. Uh, then written by an individual that says, oh, the kundalini is, is so painful and it's, and it's just their resistance to this force that is making it painful for them and, and it will not drive you to suicide except if you don't know what's occurring and if you don't know what's occurring and you're not willing to accept uh, the answers that other people give you with regards to what could be occurring and you're just kind of getting locked into this downward spiral of pain and depression and and suicidal thoughts. You know, there's not anything that I can say right now that's going to dissuade you, except it's not the Kundalini doing this. It is yourself and your own fears that are doing this. You need to stop drinking coffee. You need to hydrate yourself. You need to make some, get some watermelon going in the morning. You need to ground yourself as strongly as you can, be like a, a tree and plant some roots out of the bottoms of your feet and the base of your spine. Kundalini will not kill you. You will kill yourself, but Kundalini will not kill you. Okay, that's another myth that we can go ahead and bust right now. Uh, Kundalini doesn't mean that uh, you go out and channel St. Frederick or, or St. Lollipop because St. Frederick and St. Lollipop are all of a sudden, you can communicate with them all of a sudden, and they say, well, I'm St. Lollipop and I'm St. Frederick, and we're sent here by the Kundalini to make you do our bidding. That's not true either. Don't you listen to those entities. You ignore the entities as much as you can. Ignore them. Okay? They may try to make you cuss. They may put bad words into your mouth. Kundalini does not do this. But it will allow the entities to do this so that you can begin to discern what is Kundalini and what isn't. Okay. This is more garbage off the Internet that uh, we need to, uh, to help people you know, make some inner corrections with. Do not listen to advice about kundalini from people who don't have it. Muji doesn't have it. He can't tell anybody what to do about a Kriya. He'll just castigate them in public, humiliate them, embarrass them, and not answer their question. Okay? Not to say that he doesn't have good things to say. I'm sure he does. But he does not know about the kundalini. And whatever he does pretend to know doesn't come from personal experience. Okay. Uh, some of these smart guys, you know, that are out there, Eckhart Tolle and all these guys, they write a good book, but they look really, really like they need to get out into the sun more. Uh, these are not Kundalini awakened individuals. They cannot advise you on the Kundalini. The power of now is not going to help you in your Kundalini. Unless the kundalini, you know, allows you to 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 set a pattern of, of perspective based upon the positive aspects of that book. Okay. <laughs> I see a lot of LOLs on there. <laughs> 
I don't even know who Matt Kahn is. You know, the last name should be a bit of an indication, maybe though, huh? C O N N. K A H N. Sorry. There's maybe a doctorate of signature there. I don't know. <laughs> so I don't know these people, so I can't say one way or anything about Matt Kahn. But, uh, you know, he's new on the block, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Well, you know, um, what can I tell you? I don't know Matt Collin. I don't know what he's saying. I hope it's not similar to what his last name would be pronounced as. Uh, but sometimes you do get a doctrine of signature working with people. Um, now, Yogananda, Yogananda set in some pretty good values, pretty good uh, teachings to give people. Uh, so I suggest Yogananda. I like Sri Ramani. is great. Uh, you know, the Real Deal, uh, Aro Bindo from India as well, The Real Deal, Gopi Krishna, of course. Uh, out here in the States, I know only of myself. Glenn Morris had it, but he passed. Uh, there are some other people that have it, but they haven't been able to do the, uh, the uh, ego uh, self-management and so they, you know, they kind of expect you to treat them like a god or a goddess. At least that's what they were telling me. So I'm not going to even mention their names. Thomas Merton, I don't know who Tom, you know, I've, I've been out of the loop for a while. I've been teaching for almost uh, 10 years now. So I don't know who these other teachers are. I just, you know, I just let the Kundalini come through, and that's basically what I'm doing. Um, uh, that's all you oh, Yeah. I, I, he's a Christian monk, I think. I read. I mean, he writes some interesting things. I read him a long time ago, uh, but uh, I think he's. Yeah. I think he's dead. And there's there's another thing, you know, a dead teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Dead teachers That's don't answer questions. <laughs> <laughs> dead teachers don't answer questions. So. Which can be handy sometimes. <laughs> Welcome to the dessert. <laughs> <laughs> I like dessert better. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a little bit of a yeah. chat room interaction there. Um, uh, yeah, it's nice to yeah. read books. I, I read a lot of books. You know, some of my authors were like T. Lobsang Rampa, which stands for Tuesday. Lobsang Rampa, oh. and of course, uh, Robert Monroe Robert. for the Out Body Work. Um, I mean, I'm just going to put you in the blue here since I don't like to hear myself say everything twice. Uh, so Robert Monroe and uh, Gopi Krishna and even Bonnie Greenwell. I enjoyed Bonnie Greenwell's scientific take on it. The biology of Kundalini woman, you know, this is, it's just, you know, she, she attributes everything to biology of Kundalini. And I don't buy that at all. But she seems to have helped a lot of people with her work. Um, yeah, yeah. Some of the some of the far out things. I, I, you know, I'm not gonna. I shouldn't mention them, even though they're they're part of the deal too. Some of these far out uh, um, things, such as the Tuaha De Danan or Tua De Danan, as uh, Amelia's people will say. Um, I did like. Uh, uh, Kundalini and the Chakras by, what's your name, Amelia? Genevieve. 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 Yeah. So that's a good one, even though it's channeled information, which I always tend to be a little bit critical about. But I think that that actually came through very clearly. Uh, That's a good book. Um, and there's very few others that offer any kind of a real understanding or protocol about the Kundalini. But, you know, there are some out there. You're just going to have to kind of see what your Kundalini wants you to partake of. And in many cases, it won't be just from one book. It'll be through uh, many books for you to determine your own interpretation of your own equation. These authors cannot answer your own equation. You know, they can't see into you. They're not even interested. They're just happy that you bought the book. Um, you know, 
and, and to some degree, whatever they have written, you know, that is truthful, that helps to clarify and to to bring levels of, of, of compassion rather than fear uh, into the Kundalini awakening expression. Well, that's a positive thing they have done, and I honor them for that. Definitely honor them for that. And if you can watch that Kundalini movie called Kundalini um, by Nitin Adsul, A-D-S-U-L, then I would suggest that you watch that or purchase that and, and let yourself kind of be guided by that. You get different teachers. You know, it's not all from one person. So you get a, a bit of a different uh, take than what I'm offering. Okay, any questions? We have about four minutes left. The phone number is 347 Go ahead, Amelia. Could I just um, tell people that they can look up some information as well on Facebook about the seminar. If you put in a search for Kundalini Seminars and Events with Chrism, you will get information on the seminar that's coming up in, in September in two weeks, two or three weeks' time. That would be Kundalini Seminars and Events with Chrism. Put that into the search on Facebook and you'll get information. Well, and, and it is, I mean, if, if you have the Kundalini or you want the Kundalini, and I haven't already told you not to come like I have for some people that are just there to, to spread their entities amongst other people. Um, if, yeah, come. Come to this. This will be a very, very helpful thing. Don't let cause to get in your way. Don't, I mean, it's two days. You know, sleep in your car, whatever. I mean, this is what I would have done. Um, don't let costs get in your way. Uh, come to this thing. Come. Participate in your equation. Bring it out into the public, even though you can, you can come there under, you know, a secret name. You can call yourself, you know, uh, Tommy Tomato. I don't care. I don't care. I'll call you Tommy Tomato, too, if you want. I mean, it's not, I, I, you know, we're not there to out people that have kundalini. We're just there to really help people come into balance and to learn which ways that they can uh, they can increase it or, or, you know, come into a greater harmony with it. So come to this seminar if you possibly can. If you're anywhere near the Midwest or northern Midwest, Minnesota, St. Paul, you know, that's not too far from Chicago. That's not too far from Canada. That, you know, you guys can do this. I just had a student drive for 10 hours to go from Southern California up here to the ashram. And, you know, she's only able to spend a little bit of time. And But it's worth it. It changes things. It changes your response and, it, and the response from the kundalini to you. So if you can make these seminars, you give Rosemary a call. Her email is rosemaryg at usinternet.net, I think. <laughs> Something like that. Let me, let me ask Eileen here. Am I on? Hi, Eileen, Hello? you're on. What's her yes. email address? Rosemaryg at usinternet.com. Dot com. Thank you, my dear, and You're thank awesome. you for with, thank you for lasting throughout the entire show. Nicely done. Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. It was interesting. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Eileen. Okay, everybody, we're coming down to the to the crunch time now. I'm going to say thank you for listening to this program. Uh, sorry for any of the interruptions, uh, and if I stepped on anybody's toes, well, you know, go get a bandage. Um, all of this has been good, uh, good information here, and we will continue to put out this good Kundalini information for as long as we can do it. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Amelia, do you have something to say? No, goodbye, and look forward to seeing everybody again next Wednesday. And thank <laughs> you, Starloon. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a beautiful, beautiful week. See you next week.